Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add vertical slider elements to Divi's slider modules for a unique header design. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve, so without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so we're going to start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages, click on Add New. Now we're going to give this page a name and we're just going to call this Vertical Slider Elements. And then I'm going to click on Use Divi Builder. So for this example, I'm going to build everything from scratch. However, you can actually build this on an existing page. All right, so I'm going to click here on Build from Scratch. And then we're going to start with adding these two columns. Next, we're just going to close this for now and add a background color to our section. So I'm going to click here on my section settings, click on background, and then I'm going to click here on this plus button. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So here's my color right here, and we're going to save. Next, we're going to go into our row settings because we need to make some adjustments to our gutter. So I'm going to click here on my row settings, and then we're going to go straight to design. Click on sizing, and then here, this is where we want to activate use gutter width, and we're going to set this to one. Now, what this gutter width does is it pretty much reduces the space between the columns. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and also adjust the, uh, the width, and we're going to set this to 80VW, and also on the maximum width, we also need to set it up to 80VW. Next, we want to add some box shadows, so I'm going to scroll all the way down here to box shadow, and the option that we're going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to select it. And then I need to add my shadow color. So I'm going to scroll down here and click on this eyedropper tool. And I'm going to paste my values between the brackets. Now we need to adjust the box shadow position. So we're going to come over here to horizontal and we need to add minus 10 pixels. And then over here on the vertical position, we're going to set this to zero. So now the line only shows here on the left. Now it's time to add our modules. So I'm going to go ahead and save, and then we're going to click this plus button. Now our first module here is going to be a heading. So I'm just going to search for my text module and select it. Right, so I'm just going to overwrite this with my heading and my heading is going, is going to be called my work. Now, since this is a heading, it needs to be set to heading two. So I'm going to click here on this drop down and set this to heading two. Now let's go ahead and customize our heading. So I'm going to click here on the design tab, click on heading and make sure you select heading two. Now here uh, it's set to default font, but of course we want to use our own font. So I'm going to search here for color and select it. So for our text color, as you can see here, our text is pretty dark. So we need a, a color which is visible on this dark background. So we're going to go ahead and choose white. And then over here for the size, we're going to set this to 5VW. And then we're also going to adjust our padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And I'm going to start here with my padding of 15% to the top, 20% to the bottom, and then 5% to the right and the left. So for this, I'm just going to activate this chain. And the same value is now applied both to the left and the right. So the next step now is to add a shadow. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow. And the option I'm going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to select it. And then we're going to add our horizontal position. So here we're going to set this to 60. For our vertical, we're going to set this to zero. Now to achieve this really cool style, we also need to add a color to our box shadow. So I'm going to come over here and click on this eyedropper tool. Now here by default, it's set to have a transparency. So we're going to drag the slider all the way up to the top so that we can get our hexadecimal values. So I'm going to add now my value in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now that we've added this, it's time now to add a text module for our body content. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, search for my text module and select it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to adjust my width. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing. So here on my width, I'm going to set this to 70%. And then I'm going to align it to the right. And then I'm also going to add some margin. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here to spacing. So I'm going to add minus five to the top, because this is way too, I mean, it's quite low here. So we just need to bring it up a little bit. So I'm going to set minus five here. 
And then we're gonna also add some padding. So I'm gonna add 5% to the bottom. So I'm also gonna set 10% for the left and 5% to the right. The next stage now is to add our shadows. So I'm gonna come over here to box shadow. And the option I'm gonna go with is this one right here. And then I'm gonna start adding my values for my horizontal and my vertical position. So this time for the horizontal, I'm gonna set this to zero. And for my vertical, I'm gonna leave it at 10 pixels. Now, let me add the color. So I'm gonna click here on the eyedropper tool and paste the color between the brackets, just like that. All right, so with all this done, now we are ready to add our vertical slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and save here, click this plus button, and I'm gonna search for my slider. I'm gonna select it. So here, the first thing we need to do is to go into the first slider settings. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon. And then here on the text, we have quite a lot of text here. So what we need to do is to just um, cut down the amount of text here just to down to one line. And then we need to add a background image. So I'm gonna come over here to background, click the third tab, and then click this plus button. Now the images that you need to add are supposed to be rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now you can do this in a program like Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my image here and click upload an image. Now we're gonna do the same for the second slider. So I'm gonna click this back arrow, click on content. So over here, I'm gonna click this gear icon again, go into text, get rid of uh, all this text here and just leave one line. And then I'm gonna to go to my background, click the third tab, and then I'm gonna add my image and upload an image. Okay, so my two sliders now have my images that I need. Click on design. And then I'm gonna scroll all the way down to transform. And then I'm gonna come over here to transform rotate. So the, what we need to do now is to enter the Z, the Z axis and we're gonna set this to 90 degrees. And now you can see that our slider has changed. Now it's time to go into the slider settings. So I'm gonna click here on this back arrow, click on design, sizing. So here I'm gonna start off with setting my height to 40 VW, and then I'm gonna come over here to spacing. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is to add a padding top of zero and 21 VW to the bottom. And then for the left and the right, I'm gonna set this to zero. Right, so the next stage now is to adjust my text settings. So I'm gonna come over here to my text. I'm gonna set my alignment here to the left. And then let's start adding our font. So I'm gonna come over here to title text click here on default and set this to color, just what, like what we did here to our heading. And for the text size, I'm gonna set this to 32. And then over here on the line height, by default, it's set to one EM. So I'm gonna set this to 1.3 EM. Now let's go to the body text. And all we need to do here is to set the body letter spacing. And this is going to be set to three and the line height to 1.8. Now it's time to style the button. So I'm gonna come over here to button, use custom styles for button, activate that, set it to yes. And I'm gonna come straight to my button background color, click this plus button and add my value in here for my color. Now for my size here, I'm gonna set this to 16. Now let's remove the border width. So here it's set to two by default. I'm just gonna drag the slider all the way down to zero. And for the button letter spacing, we're gonna set this to two pixels and the weight to semi-bold. Now for the icon here, you can you know add whatever icon you want, but in this example, I'm gonna add a plus sign to my icon. And then for the button alignment, I'm gonna set this to right. And I'm also gonna add my button margins. So I'm gonna set 10% uh, to the top and 10% to the bottom. So I'm gonna activate my chain. So now my value has been applied both to the top and the bottom. And as you can see, when I mouse over this button here, we can see the plus, but the plus sign. Now let's head over to the background. So I'm gonna come back over here to my content tab, click on background. Now for this design, we're gonna add a gradient. So I'm gonna click on the second tab and then we're gonna click this plus button to add our first color. And my first color here is just gonna be a normal um, color. I'm gonna paste it in here. And my next color here is going to be an RGBA value. So in order for us to get the brackets, we just need to slide uh, the slider down a little bit and then paste our values in here. So for our start position, I'm gonna set this to 12. 
and my end position to zero. Now, as you can see, we can't really see our gradients that we've just added here. So what we need to do is to make sure we place the gradient above the image, set this to yes. And now you can see that it's now showing. Now, as we can see, this button here looks a bit weird because uh, it's not facing the right way. So we can address this by adding a bit of CSS code. So I'm going to come over here to my advanced custom CSS. And then what we want to look for is the slide button. And this is where we need to add the CSS code. And just by adding this transform rotate, now our button is facing the right way. So pretty much that's all you need to do. And our slider now is looking really nice. Now, if I mouse over this, you also notice that the arrows are here on the sides. Now we can also transform these by adding a bit of uh, CSS code. And again, while we're here, we can come over here to slide arrows and paste this CSS code. Now let's take a look at our final design. So I'm going to go ahead and save here. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.